Let's get into the giant mailbag. What crazy thing did City, City. do this week? It's time for Mattress Running the Numbers. Ready for the main event? The main event. Frequent Miler on the air starts now. Frequent Miler on the air starts now. Today's main event, pay taxes, earn big rewards. Now, I don't love preparing my taxes, but I kind of have started to really like paying my taxes <laughs> because there can be really, really big rewards involved. And we will get into the details of how to make that happen later on in the show. Yeah, you know, it's kind of crazy, actually, because obviously, mathematically speaking, credit card rewards don't uh, outpace the value of what you're spending necessarily. But if you're earning a, a couple of big welcome bonuses while you're paying your taxes, I mean, it's pretty conceivable that you could end up with a trip that's worth more than whatever you paid, right? So, uh, you know, compared <laughs> to the cash true. rates, so pretty crazy. So it is kind of fun paying your taxes when you're playing the game. But we'll talk more about that. Don't forget, wherever you're watching or listening to the show, please like it, subscribe, enable notifications, leave a comment. All of those things help other people find it. They help it get recommended to other folks too. So please do all of that. We really appreciate that stuff. And don't forget that the timestamps are in the show notes. So if you want to jump around to a specific segment or you want to return to a specific segment later on, then you can look for those timestamps in the show notes. You'll either have to expand the description box on YouTube or if you're listening in podcast platform, just you know look at the notes. So that's that. So let's move to that first segment up, which is the giant mailbag. Drag it out, Greg. All right. Today's giant mail requires some background. Uh, first, you have to understand what the Ritz Carlton credit card is all about. So this is a card that uh, is no longer available new, uh, except sideways. So what do I mean by that is <laughs> uh, you, you can get a Chase Marriott card. They have like three or four different uh, consumer cards. You have to have a consumer card and then you can upgrade to the Ritz Carlton card. So it's still available in that way. Um, and one of the benefits, there's a number of benefits to the card, but just one that we're going to talk about right here is that it offers $300 per year in airline incidental credits. Uh, so if you, you know, basically like pay to check bags or something, uh, you can get $300, uh, up to $300 reimbursed for those types of charges. And um, in order to get those credits, you have to contact Chase and ask for them. That doesn't happen automatically. Um so I, I should mention too that that Nick has a whole post out about you know what types of charges actually work to get these credits and the short answer is pretty much anything as long okay. as the the chase rep you contact thinks that it might apply right <laughs> <laughs> right no that's that's definitely the short of it it's a, it's totally human dependent which simultaneously makes this benefit hard for people who are new to the card who have never had the card because they're like well what works and i'm like well it just depends and and so that makes it hard to plan because you don't know for sure which types of charges beyond the official ones the official ones things like check bags and seat selection things like that will definitely work but beyond that i mean it really is just up to the agent which personally i love and and you need to embrace if you're going to get the card because you never know what kind of charge might work. So it could be worth, you know, throwing something out there. Like we've had readers report success with airport parking, a blade helicopter transfer, things that clearly are not airline incidental fees, but you know, it just depends on the person that is crediting it. But better yet, it does get a little better, right? We got a tip from a reader about really the easiest way to do this. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, yeah, this this comes from Michael. And and I think this could easily be in our what crazy thing did a reader uh, <laughs> do this week uh, segment. But no, th this is in our giant mailbag. And Michael writes that I automatically put all travel related charges on my Ritz card. That includes ticket fees for award travel, seat upgrades, cheap airfare, fare, you name it anything travel related. I downloaded my transactions, then fed it into chat GPT and asked it to put together a note requesting the chase agent reimburse me per the $300 travel credit. Chat GPT put together a nice list of transactions and the payee, et cetera, and a nice note to chase. I pasted that into the secure messaging and the agent wrote back a few days later, some of these charges are valid, some are not, I've credited you $300. <laughs> in other words, I have no idea what worked and what didn't, but I can tell you that if you present a bunch of airfare-related charges, agents will, agent will 
I don't know, did the agent just give up and credit me or did the agent actually go through the charges? Who knows? But it took me maybe five minutes to download, upload to chat GPT and paste into the secure message to chase. Definitely worth it. I'll keep doing it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> is that. Terrific. I mean, that's gold right there, right? That's hilarious. But I mean, but true, right? I mean, if you just throw a whole bunch of charges at them, probably, you know, either they're going to go through all of them or they're going to look at it and be like, ah, that's enough. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, again, what I love about it is that it's entirely agent dependent. Now, some people, I know that there are some people out there who are going to be like, oh, but I don't want to put an airfare charge on there that I could put on a card where I get, you know, three ultimate rewards per dollar uh, you know, spent, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, OK, so you're not going to put like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of charges on it that you know, just might work. Uh, but but like, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of charges or whatever uh, that you think something in there is going to work. I mean, that seems like a reasonable strategy to me. I don't <laughs> usually have much trouble. I should know. I don't usually have much trouble using this legitimately because I tend to end up having to pay to check a bag or select a seat or something a few times a year. So usually the $300 comes in handy for me anyway. But truth be told, just about anything could work. Yeah. So are you going to try this in the future? Chat I mean, I kind of want to just because it's fun, right? I mean, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's just a funny idea as to how to do it and really simplify your life a little bit. People often ask, well, what do you say in the message? You know, because you, you can, we should back up. You have to manually request the credit. So things don't automatically credit, which we mentioned at the beginning. So there's two ways to request that. You can either call and talk to an agent over the phone, just call the number on the back of your card, or you can send a secure message through your account. And so that's what we're talking about here, Michael, sending a secure Secure message, people often say, well, what do you type in the secure message? And I usually just type something like, you know, I, I, I'd like to apply my travel credits to, you know, these charges and I just keep it pretty simple. And then if they ask more about what those are for, then we can talk more about what they were for. But I usually just provide the minimum and, you know, usually that just works. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so this is great because you don't even have to think about what to write. Just let ChatGPT do it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do the same thing. I just I, I actually I think I usually do write something like uh, these are seat assignment fees or something along those lines, just to uh, you know be clear that it, it's a um, an included you know type of charge. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. A little more Ritz news right now that we're going to sneak in here, even though it's not really a mailbag segment. I guess it's it's mail that came from Chase, though. Well, right, right. It's an email. <laughs> email it is. It, it's which is really how all of the mail comes in. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, so this email came from Chase to anyone who has who is a uh, Ritz credit card holder. That says. Basically, uh, we're bringing back the metal card. So uh, they had switched yes. the Ritz card to a plastic card, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I guess. But apparently people haven't liked that. And so they're bringing back the metal card, like it or not. So <laughs> you seem happy about this, Nick, but I'm not. Uh, I, I can tell because you're just you're a grumpy old man, Greg. That's really what it comes grumpy down old to. Man. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. So, tell me what so, your complaints are. Yeah. Well, I don't like carrying around an 18 pound card. I mean, <laughs> my, you know, my uh, wallet, my backpack is heavy enough without it being like 18 pounds heavier with the Ritz card. Um, also, this card in the past has set off the the uh, metal detector. And so it, at the airport. And what so are you doing uh, going through a metal detector with something in your pocket, Greg? <laughs> like, yes, say pre check, man. <laughs> you don't have to take stuff out of your pocket. Oh, I take everything out. Come on. I don't, I don't want to. I know I'm going to get. Well, I don't have TSA pre-check, so that's part A. But part B is even if I did, I would take the stuff out because I just don't want the extra hassle. I know, I know stuff. Extra is hassle. No, yeah. nothing else causes it except for, well, the phone. But I always take out my phone. But oh, oh, um, so you reach yeah. in the pocket for that. But like, you know, one more thing out of the pocket. Right. Can't, well, can't to be remember bothered. to fish through my wallet. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Well, anyway, I, through my wallet. Um, I take the whole wallet out, but, but okay, like it so or not, like it or not, it's like it or not. It, it at least will, if you keep it in your breast pocket may prevent you from getting killed from a bullet. <laughs> well, and for anybody who was not a card holder back in the day, you might think that this conversation seems ridiculous because you have a wallet full of metal cards. But if you never had the actual metal Ritz card, then you probably just don't quite get it yet. Hopefully you will. Hopefully they are bringing it back the way we remember it because, well, I say hopefully, Greg hopes not. But but when we're talking about this thing setting off metal detectors, it's because it was actual like 
metal, not like a piece of metal sandwich between two pieces of plastic, like a lot of the metal cards on the market. It was like a hunk of metal that was almost twice the weight of any of the other quote unquote metal cards on the market. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's heavy duty and I love it because it comes in handy. I've used it as a tool. I used it as a screwdriver to like adjust the crib. When I went to a hotel once and my son needed the crib adjusted a little bit lower, I had a screwdriver right there in my wallet. I've used it to pop the metal top off of a glass bottle of water in Europe because you know, it's a metal, heavy metal card. It's, I mean, it works for that kind of stuff. So I love having it. I love also just kind of clunking it down on the counter. It's kind of fun. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't think about those uses. It would be cool if they actually had it be more like a Swiss army knife type of card <laughs> where you can pull out an actual screwdriver or a bottle opener and things like that. They should think about that. That, that would be quite the, uh, quite quite the, the card. card. There you go. Yeah. All right. So that's our giant mailbag for today. Let's talk about a card. This week's card talk, we're going to talk about Capital One's Spark Cash Plus card. So the Spark Cash Plus is a business card, right, Greg? Yeah, yeah. Business card. It has a $150 annual fee, uh, but no foreign transaction fees. It's a charge card. You have to pay it in full monthly, but that's great practice anyway with any cards. We always encourage that. Um, the card earns 2% cash back all purchases, uh, for one exception, if you, if you uh, book hotels or rental cars through Capital One Travel, then you get 5% back for that. And um, that $150 annual fee, you can get it back uh, every year that you spend at least $150,000 on the card. Mm. So, you know, I mean, I think a lot of business people yeah. probably do that anyway. So, uh, you know, people who are spending that much can think of it as a fee-free 2% back everywhere uh, cash back card. And um, one of the coolest things for in my mind about it is that if you decide, if you're in a situation where you'd be better off transferring points to airline programs, um, and if you have in your household a, uh, a miles card from Capital One, like a venture card or a Spark Miles card, which is their business version of the venture, um, such as the Spark Miles Select, which has no annual fee, you can move your cash back, right? Right, Nick? You move mm -hmm. your cash back into miles. And then yeah, transfer. yeah, you go right into your rewards. So if you're in your Spark Cash Plus account and you click View Rewards, then one of the options is Move Rewards. And when you click that Move Rewards, it comes up and shows which other accounts are eligible to share with. And you select one of your miles earning accounts. And then yeah, you convert cash back to miles at a rate of one cent is one mile. So uh, you know if you have. $500 in cash back, that's 50,000 miles. So you can convert over as much or as little as you want. There's no caps in terms of how much you can convert to miles. And you can also, Capital One allows you to share rewards with other people. So my wife has done this from her Spark Cash card uh, to one of my venture cards. That requires a phone call if you want to do it, uh, if you want to send your rewards to another person. But if you want to send it to one of your other cards, you can do it yourself online, self-service, really easy. And for this reason, we have a Spark Cash, not the Spark Cash Plus. We have the old credit card version of this. Uh, but for this reason, I put purchases on that over one of the venture cards because it gives me the added flexibility of redeeming for cash if I want, uh, which, of course, you can always redeem venture miles for travel charges at a rate of one cent each. But having it as cash back means I could actually take that out as cash if we prefer. So I like using the 2% card because I can always move it to miles later on if I want. At least that's the way Capital One has it set up. Now, to be clear, that's not a benefit that they advertise. It's just a feature that works. And we discovered that a couple of years ago and wrote about it. And so, uh, so it's been working for a long time. It's something that they could discontinue. So keep that in mind. We don't know for sure that that'll be around forever. But as things stand anyway, I like their 2% back cards for that reason. All right. So, so there you go. So, uh, you know, we're fans of cards that earn two X everywhere. Uh, and, uh, this one has the advantage of, um, as Nick said, that if you actually prefer the cash back, you can do it that way. And if you want um, the transfer to be able to transfer to miles or, or uh, hotel points, you can, um, you can do that by by involving a, a second card in in the in the mix. Now, quick so, question though: Is this card worth one hundred and fifty dollars if you're not going to spend one hundred and fifty k per year on it? I mean, obviously, usually there's a welcome bonus, and so there'd be reason to earn that. But but beyond that, 
initial year, is it worth paying $150 for a 2% back card? I mean, in general, I would say no, because there are fee-free cards that earn 2% cash back, but there's not many business cards. Like, So if you're, if you yeah. really want a business card, not that, and I'm saying it that way because a business can use personal cards, but some, some business people prefer to use ones that are dedicated just to business. And, and so if you have to have that, um, then I, I think this is a decent choice. I, I don't know. Can you think of one off the top of your head that's um, fee free? No. There, there might be, but no, I, there I might be. Yeah. I can't think of one either on the, on the business side specifically. And, and the other thing worth mentioning is, you know, Greg mentioned it's a charge card, a pay in full card, as they call it. Uh, you have to pay the balance in full monthly and Presumably, theoretically, that should mean that you would have more spending power in the long term. Now, I say in the long term because when you first get approved, Capital One can sometimes be really weird about how much they'll let you spend. But but theoretically, anyway, based on your behavior in terms of charging and paying back, your spending capacity should increase over time. And you could theoretically put an unlimited number of charges on the card. And I say theoretically because surely Capital One's going to stop you at some point. But, uh, but if you have a legitimate business where you've got six figures in expenses per month, you may be able to use this card for that. So that also makes a difference in terms of this over other options if you're looking to put you know that, that volume of spend through a single card. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. So that's that's our card talk for this week. Let's talk about a crazy thing. What crazy thing did the Pepper app do this week, Greg? Yeah, I love this because uh, our own Stephen Pepper, he has, he has his own website that's all about gift cards. He has a website called GC Galore, gift card galore. And um, so then out comes this app called the Pepper app, which is all about the ability to buy gift cards through the app, you 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 get them instantly. And so the the idea is that like you're at a store and you're about to pay, and and so you can type in how much you're about to pay and and buy the gift card to that store and you get five percent back. That's the idea behind the Pepper app. It has nothing to do with Stephen Pepper <laughs> other than a name coincidence, unless right. they named it for him uh, <laughs> secretly. We don't know. <laughs> right. But um but on the surface, I mean, with nothing else going on, uh, if they actually could keep this 5% rebate thing long term, this is pretty great because um, there are merchants on there like Amazon and Walmart that aren't usually available to discount gift card uh, sites. And so here's a, here's a way to get just 5% back in rewards. That's in addition to whatever you, pay, you earn with your credit card by, by paying through it um, directly. Yeah, um, by paying for the gift card, that is. So you're paying Pepper for a gift card that you then use at the merchant. Yeah. So yeah, you'll get the right. 5% back from Pepper plus whatever you earn on your credit card when you're buying that gift card. So right. Yeah. right. yeah, I mean, that would be pretty good, but it gets even better for the first month, presumably, because they're advertising right now. And they sent an email after I signed up too to remind me that for the first 30 days, they're supposed to double that 5%. So after 30 days, Hopefully, <laughs> we'll get another 5%. So end up earning 10% back in total for the first month, which 10% back on, like Greg said, certain brands like Amazon or Walmart or maybe Best Buy. I don't know. There are some other things in there that you don't typically see on sale. And 10% back on them is terrific. I mean, that's great. It's just easy money, it seems. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so, so I'm loving that. Uh, now it is a new like startup app, and we've seen things like this go go south really quick before. So there's no hundred percent guarantee there. Uh, but you know, at least so far, the five percent is is working, and and uh, so fingers crossed with that. But uh, but there's more, right? So you can uh, you can earn uh you can refer friends and get twenty dollars per referral and and if you use a referral you get twenty dollars if you spend a hundred dollars through the app so for example like when i signed up i just bought a hundred dollar amazon gift card and immediately got um twenty dollars in my in my account for this sort of sign up bonus if you will um and uh the equivalent of five dollars in these things they call coins or something that uh, can also be used. So, so basically, I got twenty five dollars back to spend on more gift cards, and and so um, that was pretty cool. 
Yeah. So that was, and it did work really well in the beginning. I did the same thing. And then I referred my wife and she bought a gift card. So you know, I got $20 when she bought her hundred dollar gift card and she got $20 plus her five for, you know, for the 5% now, uh, hopefully the five later will come too. So, uh, so that worked really well in the beginning, but I, apparently it seems that they had rampant, uh, uh, abuse, so to speak, of that of people self-referring endlessly in order to earn yeah. those credits. So they slowed things way down. So we wrote about this. And then the next day, my account was deactivated for a while, uh, as was Stephen Pepper's, because we had a lot of referrals, I think. And so uh, so anyway, eventually they fixed that. But they, they've told a reader since that they've changed the model to now the $20 referral bonus that you earn when you sign up and you spend $100 will post up to 30 days after you've made your first $100 purchase. So it seems that they're building in some buffer time to make sure that someone doesn't just endlessly refer themselves uh, so they can catch that before they pay out an endless number of $20 bonuses, which is probably reasonable because the way it was happening, I can imagine they probably got rampant uh, abuse of that. So, so it's not yeah. unreasonable, but it does change it a little bit in terms of now you have to have the faith if you sign up for it and spend the hundred dollars that you're going to get that twenty dollars in the future you'll get the five right away for the five percent now and then you got to hope that you'll get the five percent later and the twenty dollars later i imagine you probably will but at the same time 10 percent back on some of these brands is not sustainable long term so uh so a little crazy but i signed up right away and it's i think it is another good example of one of those things that when you see these types of opportunities you got to strike while the iron is hot, jump on it yeah. and, and you know take advantage because that's not a sustainable amount back. But if they're looking to build interest and they're willing to spend X number of dollars to build that interest, well, take advantage of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, that's great. And and by the way, uh, yeah, it, it's not sustainable, um, but they do it like instead of advertising, yeah. instead of spending a lot on advertising, they spend a lot on these cash back things and that gets you know, uh, blogs like ours uh, writing about it. So they get, they're sort of paying for advertising indirectly by doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that what I mean. Sense. Yeah, if they got a bunch of money to spend like that, then you might as well take them up on, you know, they're looking to pay people to use the app essentially. Like here's your chance to check it out. And, and yeah. so you got to take advantage of that while you can, because that's 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 the purpose. That's why they do it. So you might as well strike while that iron is hot. So yep. Good luck there. Hopefully that'll continue to work out well for everybody in the long run. And, and by the way, for ongoing gift card purchases, uh, word on the street is that if you spend more than $1,000, $1,000 or more in a day, that's going to lead to getting your account suspended or shut down. So if you're like, oh, wow, 10% back on Amazon. I spend money on Amazon all the time or Walmart or whatever. Go easy. I mean, we, we had no problem my wife bought a $500 Walmart gift card and that was fine. Uh, so she got her 5% back now and presumably we'll get the 5% later, but you know, you can't go, uh, you can't go all in, so to speak on that. Uh, go slow. All right. That's a crazy thing. Let's talk about mattress running the numbers. This week's mattress running the numbers is kind of crazy. This could have been a what crazy thing mattress running the numbers for this week is the Hilton Roblox promotion whereby you can earn 111,111 Hilton Honors points. Are you in on this, Greg? Are you That's trying, a to, lot of trying ones. to win it? <laughs> um, well, let's let's talk a little more about this. So I'm going to let Hilton's PR department do the talking <laughs> That's here. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here's how it goes. And uh, forgive me if I pronounce things completely wrong. Um, it says Paris Hilton's Sliving Land. Yeah, it's like Sliving slaying land? and living. It's like you're going to slay living, sliving. Sliving. Sliving Land will premiere an interactive Hilton hotel lobby where users can participate in a scavenger hunt to collect Hilton branded items and claim free limited Sliving Land digital wearables. In a first-of-its-kind metaverse to real-world activation, Hilton is giving away more than 12 million Hilton honors points through an exclusive virtual quest. 111 winners will revel in 111,111 Hilton honors points, and 11 winners will be crowned with diamond status for a year. All right, backing up here, what, what, is, what is with all these ones? What, what's the connection to one? <laughs> Okay, I have no idea about that. I really don't. I did. Did you catch that somewhere in the marketing? Why all the no, ones? Because I, I didn't. No idea. There must so, be something. I don't know there if it's as obvious when we're reading it out loud, saying one hundred and eleven thousand, but we're talking about one, 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 one. That's how many right. points they're right. giving out uh, per person um, to eleven <laughs> to 
one, one, one winners, and then one, <laughs> one winners will be also get diamond status. So, um, yeah, I don't know if they have some weird obsession with one. I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure. What, I'm sure. I'm not sure what that is. So, but if you're like, okay, well, what, what is this living clan and interactive Hilton lobby? So Roblox is, now, forgive me because this is outside of my expertise, but I believe Roblox is an interactive metaverse sort of a game. And you can download the app. And I know that because I did. So you can download the app uh, on your phone and play for free. So you create a little character and it's this whole virtual world thing. Now, my understanding is that Roblox is full of games that are developed by the users. So it's user generated content and supposed to theoretically be safe for kids and families to play the stuff. I guess it must get monitored somehow, or I don't know that for sure. So do your own research. Uh, but anyway, once you download and install the game, though, you can choose like what you want to check out. And you can just in the search box, type in Slivingland, and it will come up. It doesn't auto populate. You just have to type it in and hit the search button. But then you can just enter straight into the Slivingland. So it's not like you got to wander around and figure out where this is on a map. You just okay. put it in the search box and that's it. And then you're in this like virtual world and you start out in the Hilton lobby, but then you can walk around, you can leave the after you find what you need to find in the Hilton because you have to walk around the lobby pick up some stuff go up to the penthouse and find some stuff there and whatnot and then you leave the hotel and you walk around and there's this funny enough the obsession continues there's 1111 land or no I'm sorry the 1111 club which is a nightclub you can enter and walk around the nightclub and there's like a little DJ game you can play it's a little reminiscent of Dance Dance Revolution if you've ever played that yeah. uh, so bunch of those types of things within the world there's other games in different places as you wander around and then somehow i ended up in state farmland and so i met Jake <laughs> state farm and there was like some state it was weird there was some trampolines you had to jump up to get to like this dance floor and uh so yeah wait, wait state farmland is inside it is it's inside land living what? land it seems to be some sort of a you know cross brand promotion thing yeah yeah there's like you, you get into state farmland from there. Yeah. I, I don't know. Oh, don't, all right. Huh. It's That's not a whole entirely whole yeah, other whole twist. Other it is. Did it's you, did you run into Paris Hilton when you're, I did, when you're I, wandering around? Well, so funny enough, like when you start out in the Hilton hotel lobby, uh, there's an advertisement you're supposed to watch. So you got to like get in front of the front desk and look up at the TV behind the front desk. And so like it's animated, but there's an animated Paris Hilton in that. So, and of okay. course it's like an animated world. So there's a couple of pictures <laughs> here and there that are clearly Paris Hilton, but they're not, you know, they're animated. So, uh, so sort of, I saw like 2d version. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, so you could go into virtual reality, and you you don't even get to directly interact with a virtual reality <laughs> Paris Hilton. You no. get to watch a commercial on a on a TV within oh, the yeah. virtual reality. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so at least two two levels of rela reality removed from right, Paris Hilton. Right. But you do get to hear her talk about like how you're slaying this and like, and that's hot and all of her various catchphrases. So you do get some of that as you mm -hmm. go around. And, and then if you get into the apartment building, I think you end up in her apartment, I think. And so I was searching around. It really <laughs> seemed like she had this model car up on a shelf, but I really thought, oh, there must be something to do with that, but I couldn't figure it out. So anyway, uh, it's not super intuitive, but once you figure it out, it's not that hard. Like your right thumb jumps and your left thumb is sort of like a controller, but there's no controller there. So you just need to move it around like there was a controller knob. And uh, so anyway, you can wander around. But my, I think, I think, I think it's not actually that these bundles of points are hidden somewhere. Now, I only played for like an hour, a little over an hour, maybe, which I'm already embarrassed to admit that much. But uh, <laughs> But I wandered around this thing for a little while trying to see if I could find something hidden. And my impression, I think, is that this stuff will probably just get dropped in at some point. Either you're there or you're not when it gets dropped in is my thought. But maybe I'm wrong. So please go out there and, and play it so I feel less bad that I'm the only person in the world that played uh, the... Well, I know I'm not the only person because you can see other people running around, other characters. You can create your little avatar. And we've talked way longer than I ever thought I would about a virtual reality <laughs> Paris Hilton land on this show. So you can earn some Hilton points this way. Uh, is it worth the time? What do you think, Greg? Is it worth the hour and change that I put into this to, you know, hunt for points? <laughs> no, no way. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you enjoy, if you enjoy wandering around living land, uh, then obviously, sure, go for it. But uh, <laughs> is it is it worth your time for the chance of getting these Hilton points? 
Um, no, I, I didn't even want to infect my uh, device with this uh, with this download, but I, I, I guess it would be fine. I mean, Roblox is right, right. is is widely used, I guess, outside of um, living land. Um, well, I got bad news for you, Greg. I was on the clock while I was doing it. So uh, <laughs> no, no, <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I paid for it. <laughs> right, right. Oh right. boy. Oh man. Um, so, uh, and so no, you say that you say "sliving land" stands for slaying and living. Yeah, like you're slaying, slaying. life. Slaying. Right, right, right. So it's not like slaying, like killing things. But no, but you don't like... know what it means to slay. Like if somebody's no, well, like, yeah. "Oh, you slayed." You did yeah, really no, well. I, I get it. Okay, all right, yeah. So you're slaying, yeah. sliving land, slaying life. Yeah, it's living land. Yeah. I, I, I guess all I right. didn't slay. Is the problem? That's that's really what it comes down to. I just feel like it, I would I would do it if if slaying meant like actual like bat in slaying. in in world battle. Yeah, I, I think you can do that like somewhere fun. in Roblox. And there's like ways to spend money in Roblox. So if you're like, oh, I'm gonna get my kid to play this and do it for me, just like make sure you've got that set up to not spend your money because you can buy stuff. <laughs> so careful. <laughs> yeah, really good tip careful with that. Not in the Sliving Land. I don't think. I don't think you buy stuff in that. But like if you go to customize your avatar there's all sorts of things you could you got to buy robux i think in order to pay for stuff in roblox i guess i don't know ask a kid ask a kid and they can probably explain it to you but yeah i didn't win any points but you can try if you want uh poor all right all right that's enough that's enough about paris Hilton. way more than i ever thought we'd talk about her so uh let's talk about award talk up next so award talk you did some awesome work this week i mean you you definitely were uh carrying the torch for all of us and leading us to how to book flying blue stopovers right yeah yeah i've got my my scientist hat on uh, trying to dig into this so uh, last year, fl uh, Flying Blue, which is the Air France and KLM combined program, they uh, announced that they were going to that they now offer free stopovers on award flights. Um, but there was like zero guidance in the announcement about what counts as a free stopover. Um, and the only information about how to book it was you have to call to book it. Um, so. I, I decided I've got to dig into this and try to figure out what's going on here. Where can we get great value from this new capability and so on? So first I, I wrote a post where I took what little information was available online and analyzed it and said, well, I think this part means this and this other part means that. And if I understand it right, as long as you stick with a single carrier, you could have as many stopovers as you want for no additional charge. Um, so if that's true, uh, that's pretty exciting. And um, anyway, so that was one post. And then a follow-up post was like, well, let's test out this, this unlimited stopover idea. And um, I tried first with KLM flights and I ran into some difficulty there, but more because they don't have like a lot of flights that you could string together. So there weren't too many routes where I could try it on. But then I tried Delta I, and I strung together a whole bunch of Delta flights and found that, uh, yeah, in fact, the uh, it seems that you could add unlimited number of stopovers. The it's it's not it's when I say for free, uh, the award price did go up a little bit, um, but not as much as it would have gone up had I booked each segment separately. So. Um, there's something there's something good there. Uh, I'm still I still have a lot of follow up experiments to do to figure it all out, but I think there's going to be some good uh, opportunities to get a lot of value out of your flying blue points. Yeah, that's really exciting. You're you're sliving with that uh, that discovery. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, no, no. So uh, one one thing I I think is worth mentioning. I'm curious to see where this goes as you do more research because you mentioned in the post and mentioned just now that the award price didn't go up very much and certainly didn't go up as much as you would think for three separate segments, but it did go up by like almost 50%, right? So it wasn't, I mean, percentage wise, it was like, it was a, a large percent. It was not very many, it was 9,000 extra miles, but that was almost half of what the initial award cost was. So I'll be curious to see how that affects a, a bigger, you know, a bigger plan with longer, you know, more stopovers. I mean, I'm sure still it will be less than booking them individually. And that's kind of exciting and interesting, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Although w when there you is. say it went up, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really yeah, hard to say that. True. So the way, because the way, the way it works, I was comparing to a nonstop flight um, and 
even without stopovers, Flying Blue will charge more for a one-stop flight right. than a non-stop flight uh, when flying Delta. So it's it's really hard to judge. The best I could do is is figure out uh, that when booking separately, it would cost more, you know, yeah, <laughs> than, yeah. than booking yeah. it all together. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, and and I'm kind of hoping that there's that there's some um, that there's there's a there, there's a maximum that they would charge. So like if you string together enough, then mm -hmm. all the future ones would be free because oh yeah yeah you, you hit That's some some maximum cap. But I, yeah. I'm not nowhere near getting to that yeah. uh, piece of information yet. Very interesting though, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I'd be curious to check some of the Air France or KLM Fifth Freedom routes and see how one of them might uh, play in. Also, I know like they yeah. have the you know if some you could find them through flight connections probably. I would assume uh, if you take a look through there, you can find some of those things if you want to play along with Greg here and try to build your own. Uh, that you could potentially do that. So I'm excited about that because I think that this is a pretty untapped opportunity that hasn't been explored fully enough yet. So I'll be really interested in some of the creative ideas that you had both within that post and for the future sound really, really interesting. So I look forward to the results of that. But that's not all this week for Award Talk. We also had some research from you on the leading hotels of the world, right? Yeah. For your first yeah. experience with it. Right. So last year, City added leading hotels of the world, uh, their leaders club as a as a point transfer option from city thank you rewards to leading hotels of the world um and i was uh, you know anxious to try it out so i had an opportunity in southeast florida to book a two-night stay uh, i transferred a bunch of uh, city points over to leaders club and booked this uh, very what would be a very very expensive hotel and I'll tell you, what, I was really pleasantly surprised with the outcome. So first of all, I got uh, 1.8 cents per point value, meaning uh, the, uh, city thank you points uh, were worth that much compared to the cash rate, which I explored to see whether the cash rate was inflated and it was not. In fact, it was lower than most other avenues for booking the same hotel. So um, I, so that's great value right there for city points. And what I was really excited about was that Leaders Club, which you have to join for free in order to get the points at all, um, offers some benefits at these hotels that I didn't even think about you know, before booking it, that you get mm -hmm. automatically get benefits as if you have like elite status or something. And so uh, one of the benefits is a room upgrade. And it, it it explicitly says something like one category, but I got we got upgraded all the way to a uh, big suite. Nice. Um, it offers free continental breakfast daily, and uh, what they did for us is not continental breakfast, but uh, a full free American breakfast for each of us, or uh, forty dollars off the uh, breakfast charge uh, daily. And uh, then they also have things like um, early check-in, late checkout, which a little harder to test, you know, to what degree you're getting those benefits, but I was able to take advantage of late checkout. So um, some really nice uh, perks for booking this way. So I, I, I'm excited, you know, another great way to use city points. So that's, that's terrific. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And I loved that you separated in the post between like your experience with the program and the redemption versus your experience with a specific hotel, because the specific hotel seemed like it fell a little bit short of expectations. But I think it was really wise to not overemphasize that because the key part of the story for most of us, I mean, you're not going to probably stay at that exact hotel. So that exact hotel right. doesn't matter all that much. What matters is how the process works and the process works. It seems really well. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was shocking how how well the whole thing worked, uh, with one big exception, and it's just, it's just a warning to anyone who does it. Every piece of the process, it's going to look like they're going to charge you taxes and fees on top of the points, but they don't actually do that. They, it's I think it's just that their system doesn't know how to take that out of the uh, confirmation and the, and the checkout screen where it shows what you're paying, but you're really just paying the points and that's it. So, um, so that's all good. And I'll say one thing about the hotel. They, they surprised that they have a new feature at this particular hotel 
uh, which is a uh, complimentary yacht ride. <laughs> <laughs> free yacht ride. Why not? Why not? Free yacht ride. So, so, so my wife and I did that. We were the only guests on, on the yacht and the, the two uh, crew members um, and had a great couple hours out on, on the intracoastal. And uh, awesome. here's a funny thing too. This game, just in a period of a few months, uh, my wife and I have done two very unique modes of of uh, transport thanks to this game. So, so this was the second one, riding a yacht thanks to points. But first one, as we've talked about before, were, were the helicopter rides uh, thanks to the JetBlue yeah. status match from Delta. Um, so, uh, yeah, here's to more living the life, living the <laughs> exactly. life. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That 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 seemed really cool. And what a unique, interesting thing. I've I've not heard of a hotel doing something quite like that before. So that's a pretty unique inclusion. So yeah, very cool. Very interesting. A lot of fun. So we'll have to keep our eyes out for more opportunities for leading hotels of the world and see what other unique stuff like that we might find. I mean, I guess at the price point for the cash rates they're charging, they can afford to do some of that stuff. So I wonder what other cool things might be out there that we're just not aware of yet. So very cool. All right. I think that brings us to this week's main event. Main event time. Pay taxes, earn big rewards. So yeah, we all have to file our taxes, um, but at least we can earn some big rewards when we're paying for those taxes. And uh, we're primarily going to be talking about paying federal taxes here, but uh, we will have a brief uh, section about other types of taxes later on here. Um First, uh, some some background here. You can you can pay your federal taxes there are with a credit card, and there are three payment processors that the IRS works with for allowing you to do that, and they do charge a fee for using your credit card, but the fees are uh, very reasonable compared to other places that charge fees for using credit cards. So, so the credit card fees on all three processors are a little bit under two percent. Uh, the current rates range from 1.82% to 1.98%. They tend to vary a, a little bit every year or two. So uh, the exact amount, don't worry about. Just think of it as being like around 2%, but just tiny, tiny bit less. All right. Um, so let's talk about why. What, why should you use a credit card if you have to pay a fee? And um, I, I've got like, four categories of answers to that and we'll drill into each one a little bit um first probably the the least advised one uh because it, it just it, it, you're not talking about big money uh is is that there are cards that earn better than two percent cash back so you could use those and earn some profit so yeah you say not big profit and that's true for the vast majority of us but you never know some people might have a particularly large tax bill i remember uh somebody talking to me at a conference years ago that had sold an expensive property in New York City, you know, a home that they had lived in. And so they were going to owe a large amount of tax on however much that had gone up. And so something like that, I mean, maybe that small percentage would add up to a significant chunk of change. Uh, that's not going to be nearly as significant as the other ways that we're going to talk about that you could come out far ahead. But you know, maybe it's worth it for some people. It's a small win for most of us if you're using a card that earns more than 2% back. Like, for instance, if you've got the Bank of America uh, premium rewards card or the unlimited cash rewards card that both earn 2.625% back if you also have platinum honor status with Bank of America, which requires having $100,000 in cash or investments with uh, Bank of America and Merrill. And so if you've got that situation, yeah, you're earning, uh, you know, seven tenths of a percentage point not going to be enough to make it worth it for most of us. But that's not the only play out there. There's better options, right? Yeah, yeah. So an, another option is if you want uh, transferable points, and it's a way to just buy those points cheaply. So transferable points, if you're using them right, you should be, be able to get like at least one and a half cents per point value, but often much more. And uh, with cards that earn two points per dollar, you you would be essentially buying points for around one cent per point because you're you're uh, earning two points per dollar and you're paying just under two percent. So it's actually a little bit cheaper than one cent per point to buy points. Um, 
Capital One has a number of cards that earn 2x everywhere, so you could use any of those. Uh, City has their double cash card. Uh, Amex has their Blue Business Plus, where you could uh, get 2x on all spend up to $50,000 a, a calendar year. And then um, Build Card, if you happen to use it for, to pay taxes on rent day on the first of the month, then you get double rewards. So you get 2x uh, on Build Points. And uh personally that's how i'm going to be using my built card is uh is paying rent on the first of the month to uh get 2x i, I would buy built points for you know a penny each all day long um plus it'll contribute towards getting uh built has this thing where you can get uh, more levels of elite status the more you spend in a calendar year and so uh i want to re-up my platinum status with built because they offer some great perks specifically uh huge transfer bonuses to those with platinum status like the one coming up in just a few days on rent day so you're uh you know there's plenty of reasons that, yeah I, I i'm very interested in that specifically now because these big transfer bonuses are continuing to happen. So I, I want to get in on that too. And so I intend to uh, probably pursue getting a built card and, and putting taxes on that this year on the first of the month. So uh, so I think that is a, a pretty interesting potential play, but not the only one out there. So those are good options if you're looking to pay a penny a point. And, and keep in mind, you know, we will mention now the built transfer bonuses. I mean, it's going to turn out to potentially be far less than a penny a point if you take advantage of one of those really big transfer bonuses, right? I mean, if you got status and you take advantage of one of those transfer bonuses and you end up with 150% transfer bonus, you're paying a lot less than a penny a point. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every point becomes two and a half uh, airline miles when you take advantage of one of those transfer bonuses and you have platinum status. So uh, yeah. Um, I can't say so you're talking about what head, five, but... right? You're talking about five points per dollar essentially, right? Effectively. Cause you're getting two points yeah, on so, the first so, of the month. So one fifth of a cent to buy these, these yeah, miles. I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that is pretty amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, now there are some other opportunities where you can earn welcome bonuses. And we'll talk about that in a second. But as far as an ongoing, yeah, if you're able to take advantage of one of those, which, of course, we don't know if they'll continue forever uh, or if there'll be another one. But at this point, they seem to be yeah. setting the precedent that they're going to keep coming out with them. So that that's exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm just in my head to go and wait a minute. It's two and a half uh, miles per per built point not um, well you're earning if you pay it on the first of the month you're earning two built points right and so yeah yeah but but we were already factoring that it, that it's that it's it's it, it's um one cent per point because you're earning two oh, right, 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 rewards right, 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 right. so so it's i and think it's, really it's, are, it's yeah. uh no, you're right. 0.4 cents per mile that you're paying so for for anyone doing the math out there, I I, I believe that's the right answer. <laughs> it's cheap. It's cheap. That that that's for sure. All right, but all right. We so we talked about ways to buy miles relatively cheaply, but you could also earn valuable big spends bonuses or elite status or things like that. Maybe a Southwest companion pass. So you got a number of different options that could be compelling for using cards. Like for instance, the world of Hyatt credit card would be a, a particularly good one to use if you value the, the, the couple of things you can get from that card with $15,000 calendar year spend on that card, you get a category one to four free night certificate. So that's on top of the rewards you earn on spend. Plus you end up getting two elite nights for every $5,000 spent. So if you put $15,000 on a world of Hyatt card for your taxes, you earn a category one to four free night certificate. You earn the 15,000 points from doing the spend and you earn six elite nights. So that could be a good card to put a large tax bill on. Absolutely. And and there are so many that, that we didn't right. want to go through all the possibilities, but uh, tons of cards offer perks like that for big spend. One other thing I'll mention, there's a lot of if, if American Airlines cards that if you're pursuing American Airlines elite status, you uh, by putting big spend on these cards, you not only earn the miles, but you earn loyalty points towards status, plus a number of American Airlines cards offer uh, things like a, a companion ticket after spending twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand, depending on the card, and so uh, you can combine all those things to get all those perks uh, with one big spend. Yep, 
Yeah. So, so a bunch of those types of things. And we do have, by the way, a page for best big spend bonuses. So you can find a link for that in the show notes with the best big spend bonuses. That way you can compare them across different cards and see which one fits you because maybe you don't care about high elite status, don't have the high card. Maybe you're not an American Airlines person, but maybe you're going after Delta elite status this year. And so that might make sense. Or there's lots of other different cards that could make sense for that, for the big spend bonuses and elite status or credit and that sort of thing. But of course, bigger still is welcome bonuses, right? You can earn a, a valuable yeah. welcome bonus with this kind of spend. Well, that's the thing. To to earn huge numbers of points from new credit card welcome bonuses, you often have to spend a lot of money to uh, meet the requirements of the welcome bonus. And so this is the way to do it. Like, If you have your, your eye set on certain uh, big offers that require you know, $10,000, $15,000 spend, and you wouldn't normally be able to meet that spend, tax time is a great time to uh, look at that and, and tackle those things then. Um, so today, as we're recording this, here are just some examples of big offers that are out there. Uh, and you could find them on our uh, best offers page, of course, on the blog. There's, for example, the Amex Platinum card, 150,000 points after $8,000 spend. Uh, Chase has their Ink Business Preferred with 100,000 points after $8,000 spend. A uh, little bit more spend, the Amex Business Gold, 130,000 points after 10K spend. Um, you want to spend even more? <laughs> uh, <laughs> how about getting 150,000 points with a Business Platinum card after $15,000 spend? Or uh, how about uh, moving up to the Venture X business card where you could get 150,000 points after $20,000 spend? But that's not all with that offer. <laughs> <laughs> you got if, a big tax bill. Yeah. If you can, if you could uh, handle a total of $100,000 spend in six months, then you get another 150,000 uh, bonus miles. So a total of, of 300,000 points with a total of $100,000 spend. And that's on top of the 2X points you earn from that spend. So you would earn a, a huge number of points if you could actually do that $100,000 spend. Yeah, and, half a million, um, 5X on that $100,000 spend. Yeah, and that's, that's terrific. So for those who have huge huge uh, tax bills. Uh, that's definitely worth considering. And there's a cash version of that. The Spark Cash Plus has the exact same uh, welcome bonus terms, except that you're earning, instead of 150,000 points, you're earning $1,500 with 20K spend and $1,500 with uh, $100,000 spend. Um, so that's uh, either way, uh, whether you complete just the 20K or you complete the full 100K, that's a great return on that spend. Yeah, and to be clear, you know, I'm sure that there's somebody out there who heard us say if you got a really big tax bill of 100,000, then that's when you should really consider. And I'm sure there's somebody who was like, "Well, why wouldn't you open a platinum and a business platinum and a business gold and an ink business preferred if you got a hundred thousand dollars spent. And you certainly could do that and end up with far more points. So if you're willing to open multiple cards and make multiple payments and you have a large tax bill, I mean, that could be a great time to earn tons of points. The VentureX Business or Spark Clash Plus is ideal for somebody who just wants to open one card and earn one bonus rather than putting that hundred thousand dollars and spend on one of the other options. You could earn even more. With one of those right, offers. right, right, or you might have more than a hundred thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, exactly. To pay, yeah. and and then you right. could go after that one of those as well as uh, some of the others. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but I, definitely, I always look at tax time as as sign up bonus time. I I look at it and say, okay, well, and I've been thinking about it for weeks already now, saying, okay, well, we've got taxes coming up, and then we also have this that we can spend on and that, and so. Uh, I've been putting all of those ideas together in terms of what we can spend and where and how and try to formulate a strategy because it's a great time to pick up easy spend that counts. We should mention that counts for earning welcome bonuses. And, and that's something that people sometimes wonder. They're like, oh, am I going to get hit with a cash advance fee for paying my taxes on a credit card? And the answer to that is no. The IRS is very clear that making tax payments will be treated as a purchase by credit card companies. Every now and then we get a report from someone who says that they didn't get an Amex welcome bonus and they, they paid their taxes and, and an Amex agent told them it's because taxes are a cash-like transaction and it's wrong. I mean, people who followed up and continue to dig into it 
have, I think, almost invariably eventually gotten credited. I don't know why every now and then somebody doesn't automatically get a welcome bonus uh, when they've, they've made a large tax payment. But the vast majority of people who've done that, me included, by the way, as of just a few months ago, uh, you know, we've gotten our welcome bonuses as expected paying taxes. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. So uh, what about what about other taxes, not not uh, federal taxes? Uh, so the, the it, that's a harder story to tell because the answer varies by where you are. Basically, credit card options, you know, the ability to pay with a credit card at all, or or how much it costs, that's going to vary by uh, by state for state taxes. It's going to vary by. For your city, county taxes, your property taxes, they're they're all different in different areas. Um, so, you know, I would just look into your local one and see, do, do they charge a reasonable amount? Do they allow it at all? Some of them um, probably have good, uh, good deals. The other thing to check is log into your PayPal account and go to bill payment and see whether your uh, whatever, whoever your tax assessor is, whether they're listed as a, as a, a biller that you can pay through PayPal bill pay. And if so, chances are good, you'll be able to use a credit card with no fee to pay your taxes. So uh, with PayPal, in, with some billers, they only let you pay with a debit card, but with uh, most billers, they'll let you pay with a credit card. Yeah, yeah, that's a great tip because that could be super useful for a lot of people. Also worth mentioning that uh, some I've heard every now and then from people who've been able to pay local taxes with a gift card and and sometimes either without a fee or with a lower fee using gift cards. Now, I think we mentioned back at the beginning for federal taxes, you can only do a certain number of payments per processor. Was it two payments per processor? Right. So if you're going to use gift cards, it's not super useful uh, because you usually only use a couple of them. But I we've heard every now and then from someone who's been able to pay local taxes with you know more gift cards essentially. So that could be a way to use up some of those potentially. But uh, but certainly like Greg said, check and see. Sometimes the fee is reasonable enough to pay local taxes that way. And it's not always obvious that there's a way to do it online. I've I, I've looked at this with property taxes because I pay taxes for a few different family members. And the bill will come and it tells you where to mail the check. And then somewhere in small print, sometimes it says, oh, but you could pay this online and there's a site for it. And it's not necessarily particularly difficult to do. And sometimes the fee is reasonable. Like Greg said, though, that varies tremendously by state and municipality and county and blah, blah, blah. Right, right. Now, in almost all cases, you could pay your your taxes through a service, a bill payment service like Plastic, uh, which is P L A S T I Q, uh, but they they charge about a three percent fee uh, for using your credit card. So whether or not it's worth doing that, you'll have to decide. It could be in cases where you're trying to hit big spend uh, requirements for a new welcome bonus, uh, for sure. Yeah, I use that for some local taxes that can't be paid online. Uh, some of the like school district taxes and whatnot that can't be paid online. And I say some, cause like I said, I do this for a number of family members. They just give me a check and I pay. Uh, so I, I do use plastic for some of them. Uh, the other thing worth noting though, is nowadays they do also charge a dollar 50 to mail a check. So if you're mailing a paper check, they do charge a small fee for that too. Uh, so that, that comes into play as well for you. But again, totally well worth it if you're earning 150,000 points from you know doing 15k spend or whatever the, the case may be right right okay now we regularly get uh, some questions about paying taxes with credit cards and one is is it okay to overpay taxes like w will I get in trouble if I if I overpay my taxes uh, and the answer is uh, yes, it's okay. The IRS is very happy to get a loan from you. And uh, once you you know file your taxes, uh, you will be refunded whatever you overpaid. Um, I mean, that's the whole idea of a tax refund, right? I mean, like millions of yeah. people overpay every year and that's that's why tax yeah. refunds yeah. exist. So a lot of people do that. They will purposely overpay and and in order to increase their credit card spend more. And uh, but of course, you need to be very, very uh, careful about having having the funds to uh, pay your credit card bills while waiting for that payment because there's no guarantee that it'll come 
anytime soon. And uh, so you need to not get in a situation where you're incurring interest on your credit cards because you haven't paid uh, paid it in full. That, that's going to wipe out all the all the value you got from from your rewards. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't don't go after one of those hundred k spend offers if you don't have a hundred k to to pay the bill off right away. Or if you're overpaying your taxes, because usually the refund comes back relatively quickly, but sometimes it takes a lot longer. So, yeah, you need to be prepared for that. So, yeah, uh, but definitely you can. And and most people that overpay overpay by their withholdings being too much, right? But if you make estimated payments and you estimate it too high. Probably they're not going to complain about that. Um, yeah, which, which which gets to the other question people ask a lot, which is, does it make sense to uh, reduce uh, my withholdings uh, so that I'll pay more in quarterly uh, estimated tax? Or maybe you don't pay estimated tax at all, and and by reducing your withholdings, you will start to pay estimated tax. And yeah, you can you can do the same thing with quarterly estimated taxes as we talked about doing with your end of year taxes by paying through the same payment processors that we discussed earlier. There you go. So yeah, I think that makes sense. Yep. All right. And then uh, the other question that we have listed here is what to do when the payment processor didn't like my business credit card? Is, is that an issue people are running into? Yeah, this is a really specific issue that um, some of the payment processors uh, don't like, like well, with certain like Chase business cards, for example, we'll say uh, that's not a valid form of payment. And there is a work workaround, which is to pay through PayPal. So the payment processors often uh, offer PayPal as an option. And um, as long as you link your business credit card to your PayPal wallet, then you can pay that way and you still earn rewards and everything. And you don't pay extra for going through PayPal. So that's all good. Uh, one of the payment processors, though, has, has a bug where Picking PayPal is difficult because the the screen to uh, select what you're doing when you hit the PayPal button comes up and disappears right away. And there's a workaround around that, which is to set up a scheduled payment with PayPal instead of a uh, one-time immediate payment through the payment processor. So <laughs> there you go with that. Interesting. So yeah. how late in the game can you pay your taxes with a credit card? What do you mean? How late? Like, well, like, what's the deadline to be on time for your taxes? Like, can, like, do you, can you pay online the day the taxes are due? Oh yeah. 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 You can. Yeah. 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 Uh, right up. I think until midnight, the day that they're due. And it'll, I, it'll... I, I really thought you were asking me to recite the, the payment no. due dates for. No, <laughs> <laughs> no just, just want to be, if you're paying online, if you're using a service like plastic, that's mailing a check. It's a different story because your checks got absolutely get postmarked. But, uh, but if you're using, uh, you know, one of the online payment processors, I've made a payment very close to midnight before it's been fine. So, uh, so yeah, as long as you're paying on the day it's due, you, it will, it will, uh, you'll get credited for having made the payment on the right day. Yeah. At least with federal taxes, state and local. I don't know what your state and local municipality is up to or what their rules are. So check into that. All right. I think that's that. I think that rounds out the discussion about paying taxes, pay your taxes and do it with a card, earn a big welcome bonus. Cause if you're earning one of these like 150, 200,000 point welcome bonuses, those could easily buy you, like I said before, a trip that's worth more than whatever you paid in taxes in order to get the points. So it's worth going after a welcome bonus, I think. On your taxes. Yep, totally okay. agree. All right. This week's question of the week. Question of the week came in a few days ago and I answered it already, but I need Greg's answer because I think his answer might be different than mine. So a reader wrote in and mentioned that there was a new law passed in New York State in December of 2023 uh, that now basically guarantees that you'll have 90 days to use your rewards if your card account is getting shut down. So if a credit card issuer shuts you down, you get 90 days to use your points, uh, whereas in the past, some issuers just make you forfeit all the points right away. So if that was your situation, if you found yourself in a situation where the card issuer was closing your account, so you weren't going to be able to keep an account with that issuer long term. And so they said, okay, well, your account's closed. You have 90 days to use your points or lose them. Where would you transfer your points and why? And, and the question was intentionally left open for all of the various transfer point programs. So I'm curious as to your answer for each of the major transferable currencies, at least. Yeah. So uh, Chase, you said Hyatt, and I say Hyatt as well. Hyatt, you could just get great value with Hyatt, so why not? Um, Amex, I think you said you said um, Air Canada. 
Yes, right? they did. Aero Plan. Yep. Yeah. Um, that that would be that'd be my pick as well. So oh, Aero Plan. I thought for sure you were going to say something different. Aero Plan. Why? Yeah. Uh, well, Aero Plan is is extremely flexible. Uh, they have so many partners. Star Alliance is, is so broad by itself. They don't charge fuel surcharges. So a lot of good things about the program. And I like that you can optionally pay more uh, for an award ticket to get uh, free changes and cancellations. So that somewhat negates my biggest problem with, with Air Canada. I, although I guess the my real biggest problem is not negated, which is that they're... Um, call center is is horrible <laughs> yeah. but uh, <laughs> that's if only if only they had better uh, uh, uh over the phone support that then it would be a, a really excellent program um then city oh boy that's tough because uh so I think you said choice, right? That, I did. Because, I did. Because Citibank, if you have the Premier card, it transfers one to two to choice, so you can get great value that way. In my case, so I have so many choice points uh, that, it's not that a good choice. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I would be looking most likely. I would normally look at at Flying Blue. They they transfer. Everybody transfers to Flying Blue and Flying Blue. Their award program has gotten better and better recently, so that would normally be my thing. But I just recently transferred a whole bunch of built points at, a, at an incredible ratio with 150% transfer bonus to Flying Blue. So I'm flush with Flying Blue right now. To be um, clear, that transfer bonus is expired. That was the rent yes. day for January of, of 2024. So took advantage of that. Or maybe you took advantage of one even before that. I don't know which one uh, you did. No, that one, I, I that think. That one, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, wow. So the 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 one that I that I thought you had left out of your analysis, the one program that I thought you'd left out of your analysis, it's not necessarily one I would do, but I think a lot of people should consider is is Avios. That that uh, you you know Avios that the Avios points can be moved around between British Airways, uh, Qatar, uh, Iberia and Aer Lingus. And soon you have somebody to correct Greg's pronunciation. <laughs> and soon, uh, who's, who's being added in there, uh, to the Avios thin air. System, thin air, soon. Thin air yeah. is coming soon. So that, that opens up so many possibilities. Um, I think what I think it comes down to is I don't have much in the way of one world, flights out of Detroit, out of my local airport. So so I have limited opportunity to really use those kind of points directly. But if you have a more one world friendly airport nearby, uh, I think I think having a uh, points in a program like that is would be really useful. That's actually a pretty good pretty good answer, obvious, I feel like, because it does there's a lot of flexibility there because you can move it between the different programs and they have different sweet spots. While there's some awards that are very similarly priced, there are some that aren't so similar. So yeah, that and, and of course, all the major transferable currencies transferred to Avios. So very easy to keep the points alive by transferring in from other programs. So uh, that's an interesting pick, but but you just said that you don't really have much use for them. So would you really transfer them to Avios? Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't personally. Okay. I just think it's worth it was a mentioning good one. that that, mentioning, that would yeah. be a good one uh, okay. from City to consider. I know um, what you're going to say then, but go ahead, keep going. What, what am I going to say? I want to know. Well, I think even though you just said you don't have a lot of one world flights, I think you're going to say Asia miles. No. Uh, so I, I, I have a bunch of, I used to think that Asia miles was the one world carrier. You should transfer your, your city points to, but, um, then, uh, because of the party of five challenge, I, I ran into that situation where they, oh, they right. require you to name people you're going to be uh, adding, if, if you're going to be booking words for others, you you have to add them to your account, basically. And you can only add five people. And if you want to take off anyone to, to replace them with someone else, you got to pay them money to do that. <laughs> ridiculous. Um, it is totally ridiculous. And they'd also, you know, not that long ago, like they raised yeah. award prices. And so uh, I'm, I'm much less enamored with them. So no one, uh, Avios is the way I would go if I want one right. world coverage uh, going okay. forward. Um, I, yeah, I have such a hard time here because 
because like I said, I already am flush with choice and, and flying blue, which were be my two top picks. So I don't actually know uh, what I would do in, in this case. <laughs> <I see. laughs> uh, and the problem is leading hotels of the world, which we talked about earlier. Um, I think their points expire after two years or, or, or something. So I don't know whether they're uh, refreshed with activity. That's something I need to look into. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, who's left? Uh, built. Built. Yeah. I guess I would look to see, is there a, is there going to be a big transfer bonus before I, uh, <laughs> before the time runs out? And if so, probably take care advantage of that. Otherwise, uh, I think it comes down to American Air Airlines or Hyatt. And, uh, since I've presumably just transferred a million points to Hyatt, maybe it would be American Airlines. Okay. All right. Oh, you know what? We we did leave another one out. Capital One. Capital One. Uh, they do Aeroplan, right? They do. Yes. Yeah, I think I would do so Aeroplan. Aeroplan too. All right. Yeah. Interesting. I, I'm I find that very interesting that you picked Aeroplan, but I, it makes sense for me too because there's just wide Star Alliance coverage to begin with. It's a great alliance to have points in, in my opinion. And then beyond that, Air Canada has so many partners beyond Star Alliance, so it just opens up so many more possibilities. And and that combined with the fact that you can combine different carriers on a single award very easily and, and create complex routings, uh, unfortunately actually doing that is less easy because you do have to call somebody for really complicated bookings. And that's not easy at all because Air Canada just doesn't have enough phone agents. So that's the big <laughs> right. downside. But, uh, but yeah, otherwise I, I, that's a program. I think if I were going to have to use them or lose them, that would be a, a good pick for me too. Hopefully we won't be in that situation. Now it's also worth noting a reader pointed this out and they're right. I, and I thought about it when I went to write the post, but I, it was a complication. I didn't want to get into it. And that is that, you don't necessarily, if you're in this situation, have to move all your points to one partner. You probably could right, transfer right. some to one and some to another, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and in reality, I probably would do some of that. I'd want some Turkish miles because I know I'll probably find an opportunity to fly United, but I don't want to put all my miles there because they expire in three years and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. And that that's a that's a great point. And and uh truth is I, I probably if I was really doing this, I probably would add more to my flying blue collection. So, you know, I, I fly out of Detroit, which has um, has Air France flies right out of Detroit. And um, so flying blue miles can be useful for that. It can sometimes be useful for flying Delta. Um, so I, I would want I would want to have both flying yeah. blue and and uh, Air Canada uh, represented in there if I could. Yeah, yeah very good. Very good. And to be clear, those aren't necessarily my all time favorite programs. That's just what I would do if I had like a use them or lose them situation in those cases. Like ANA is one that we didn't mention at all that I think is a fantastic American Express transfer partner, but uh, it takes a couple of days to get the points there. So that can be kind of inconvenient. More importantly, the points expire after three years. And so if I were going to take all my Amex points and put them somewhere, I wouldn't want to put them in a program where they're going to have a hard expiration date. So yeah, no. You know what? I've got 86,000 uh, ANA miles that expire end of March, so I'm still trying to figure that out. You know, I almost asked you about those recently because I found a situation where I thought I might be able to use them. And so I was going to see, oh, do you still have those? But then I realized that uh, one of the flights would be operated by Brussels Airlines and the surcharges were just absolutely ridiculous. So I was like, yeah. oh, ah, no, that's not going to work. So, uh, so yeah, that's a that's, uh, the bummer with ANA. Great if you're going to fly ANA, uh, then you know you can get a great value of 75k off peak round trip in business class to Japan is a pretty amazing sweet spot. So maybe you just need to plan a trip back to Tokyo and go to Team Labs again, you know, just for the weekend. Yeah, I, I might do that. <laughs> um, if you know, if I could find if I could find the new uh, ANA uh, business class, which I haven't flown yet. And and combine it with like a weekend like that, I, I definitely consider that because I think standard pricing is like eighty five k. So yeah, it would almost exactly use up my yeah. Um, it, well, anyway, it would almost yeah. exactly use up my, my yeah. points. That would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it would, it would be. It'd be. You should do it. You should do it, Craig. I look forward to the Instagram story from that. All right. If you look forward to getting more of this stuff in your email inbox each day or each week, you want to go to frequentmiler.com slash subscribe if you haven't done so already anyway. That's frequentmiler.com slash subscribe to join our email list. You can follow us on all the various social media. We're on Instagram. You can find our frequent, uh, frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group and join that. 
where people are constantly asking questions about this stuff and answering each other's questions. Really helpful group to join there. And wherever you're listening or watching to this, don't forget to like it, subscribe, enable notifications, leave us a thumbs up or uh, you know, leave us a comment. We appreciate all of those things. And if you've got questions that you'd like to be considered for a future question of the week or for a giant mailbag segment, you can send those too. Send it to mailbag at frequentmiler.com. Bye, everybody.